Fresh lockdowns and mass testing in China as the country races to stamp out a new COVID-19 outbreak ahead of the Winter Olympics. For a closer look, Associate Professor Sanjaya Senanayaka from ANU Medical School joins us live now. Professor, for the most of part of this pandemic, Asia's been focused on bringing those infections to zero. What's driven this change to abandon you know, the strategy? Yes, look, I think in one word, Delta is responsible for that. I think a few countries around the world, in, in our part of the world, so certainly where I am in Australia and, and New Zealand, we were talking about COVID zero. And we were talking about so seriously that we closed our borders to the rest of the world where there was COVID because we didn't want COVID in our countries. But what has happened is that the variant that is Delta has shown that it is so much more infectious, at least two to three times more infectious than the original Wuhan strain, and it's just too hard to maintain COVID zero. So I think we now have to accept that Delta will be with us in the long term, and it's just a matter of controlling it. And therefore, that will change how we look towards the rest of the world and interacting with the rest of the world. Not all places are accepting it, though. Some places like China and Hong Kong are still trying to keep up to a COVID zero strategy. How realistic is that? I, I really think with Delta, it is very unrealistic. I, I still remember in, in Sydney uh, a few months ago, during the early stages of Sydney's outbreak, there was CCTV footage of someone walking past someone else, and that was highlighted at a press conference as being the mode of transmission, a fleeting transmission. So Delta is, is so infectious that uh, maintaining COVID zero will be very difficult. And of course, now we have these wonderful vaccines around, we don't necessarily have to do that either because we know that people who are vaccinated are strongly protected against severe infection. Professor Sananayaka, many countries that are moving towards living with COVID-19 are seeing this consequent rise in deaths as well. I mean, this is a hefty price, but is it an inevitable one as well? Look, again, if you look at certain countries, say in, in Europe, if you look at Denmark and Norway, for instance, uh, you, you will see that they have opened up, they've got high levels of vaccination, but so far they're not seeing a big increase in hospitalisation. Certainly in the UK, since they opened up on July 19th, in the last week or so we have seen an increase in cases, which may be about to plateau, but their health system isn't overwhelmed yet by any means. So, again, if we've got highly vaccinated populations, large numbers of cases doesn't necessarily translate into large numbers of hospitalisations and deaths. But you are right. COVID is always throwing curveballs at us, so we have to keep a close eye on what is happening. Vaccine mandates have been increasingly discussed as more countries reopen. Why are many nations stopping short of such a move? So really, vaccine mandates within a country are really a, a real test of uh, human rights. I mean, and ethical dilemmas. Do we force people to do something that we strongly encourage them to do before? And some countries, or even within Australia, some jurisdictions are doing it differently to others. Some are going to open up earlier to unvaccinated people, such as in New South Wales, whereas Victoria is likely to not let unvaccinated people enjoy the same freedoms as vaccinated people for much longer. So it really is an ethical dilemma. But the premise of this is that vaccinated people are less likely to get COVID, less likely to transmit COVID. Therefore, it's safer for vaccinated people to gather together than large numbers of unvaccinated people. Thanks as always for your thoughts this evening. Associate Professor Sanjaya Sananayaka from ANU Medical School.